If you come to gawk at commercial fishing vessels and grab some chowder along the coast like most tourists do, I have some real sad news. Scientists are united in the fact that we've already overfished pretty much every kind of fish we like to eat, and they're all in some state of kill-off. Well, this day is ruined. smells. Does it? A little bit. Something What does smells. it smell like? Fish? Yeah, it might smell like fish. Well, we're <laughs> halfway there then. Okay, all right. <laughs> this scrappy startup wants to give the oceans a reprieve in a way that could seem off to some people. We're growing a small sample of fish meat out from a real fish in a large bioreactor in massive scale in clean, sterile breweries that won't engage in all sorts of harmful practices like runoff, won't have high levels of antibiotics or hormones. Mike Salden had been thinking about the world's need for food when he had his aha moment. This is it. What if we could just grow the parts of the animal that we want and nothing else? Couldn't that be a much more efficient system? Couldn't we do that without animal cruelty and without destroying the environment around us and also just using less energy in general? So what's a fish-loving, forward-thinking person to do? Look back first, of course. We can date the first case of outright fish exploitation back to the blubber mining of whales. From there, it was on. By the mid-20th century, countries started shelling out to build bigger and better fishing vessels so everyone could enjoy fruit of the sea. By the 80s, an explosion of farm fish and fisheries management groups could barely touch the declines in wild population. A National Wildlife report found 31% of global stocks are overfished and projects commercial fishing extinction unless things change. Entire coastal societies depend on fishing. So if fish are gone, it wouldn't just be a menu item change. It would be a sea change with a side of socioeconomic collapse. Melissa, before we start, I just want to tell you how sad I now am to be standing among such beautiful fish. How concerned should we be? I think we should be extremely concerned. We are taking fish from the world's oceans at an unsustainable pace. Globally speaking, it is one of the biggest environmental threats that this world faces. So many people, billions of people, depend on the world's oceans for food. And we are depleting it at an, uh, you know, a breakneck pace that is unsustainable. The aquarium is doing its part to help fish survive by giving its dead ones to the entrepreneurs at Finless Foods. Whenever one of their fish dies, they give me a call and I jump into a, uh, a car and just zip over to the aquarium, grab the fish, bring it back here, and then Brian will make it into a uh, single cell suspension and culture that up into a cell line. These are samples I've isolated a specific type of cell and treated it with a certain type of medium to allow it to grow. It's a very small bubble that I'm trying to create this perfect environment for them. They're like your babies that oh, you have to treat. 100% they are my babies, yep. It's a very good analogy for how I treat these cells. So it's, it's the fish stem cells that you need because they need to be able to regenerate. Correct. These are the cells that are actively repairing your muscle. We are taking um, basically those cells putting them in a happy environment and allowing them to do what they do best, divide. So after they divide to a sufficient quantity, they will be changed into muscle cells. The muscle tissue consists of fat cells and muscle cells, which are separated. By dissecting the muscle cells, individual cells can be removed and cultured. The cells start dividing. Eventually, from one muscle cell, more than one trillion cells can be grown. Do you think you would eat fish that's been grown in a lab? Probably not. No, I wouldn't. Why not? Because um, it's disgusting. I would, without hesitation. And if it is tastier and if it is safe, so why not? 
Who better to know if people will grow comfortable with the idea than a person who did something similar first? Can you do the honors and, and lift the lid on your creation? I can. Professor Mark Post was the first to make a cell-cultured hamburger, which was then famously cooked and tasted during a live media event back in 2013. There are a lot of concerns out there that um, I think have not really a valid basis when we have close to 50% of the people say, yeah, I want to try this. He says his lab-grown red meat will go for about $30 a pound once it's all set up. We are aiming to do this in about three years. And we think in the end, we can actually make it cheaper than meat, but that's not going to happen early on. That has sort of has to evolve. Does it taste like meat? <laughs> the texture has a feel like meat. I was expecting the, the texture to be more soft. There's really a bite to it. The technology to scale up this production is there. It has just never been done. And yes, there's probably optimizations and fine tuning, and, and it's, it's going to be probably less simple than I kind of envision, but we see that this is doable. Finless Foods is in its infancy without a single six ounce fish filet to show for itself. The goal is to have a filet of cell cultured fish muscle by the late fall. So far, the fish can only be seen in a microscope. But it and a few other companies are going for this kind of production because one day, it could be the only sustainable protein option. Basically, there's only a few companies in this field. And so because it's so small and because we're all so driven by a desire to help the environment, we all really help each other out a lot. And this really happens because we are doing this for the same reasons. And in June 2017, Hampton Creek, the parent company for vegan mayo Darlene Just Mayo, announced it would begin working on a lab-grown meat that is poultry-based. We love that there's more people in the space, and we love that Hampton Creek is bringing its massive resources into this space. You know, for me, this isn't about me like winning or about me making money. This is about activism. This is about changing the way that we eat. Do you think lab-grown fish meat is a clear solution over farmed fish or even commercial fisheries? There is no one single solution that is realistic. Yes, if we all just stopped taking fish from the ocean, right? then ta-da, look, we solved the problem. That would be great. But that's not going to happen. So trying to you know, add as many tools to the toolbox to help solve this problem is the way to go. So whether or not Finless Foods survives as a business might not be the real issue here. It could instead be when and how quickly people in these kinds of enterprises get consumers to care before our friends are all gone and chowder is just a needlessly gelatinous potato soup.